We all know that Daryl Brooks did not know what he was doing when he was acting as his own attorney at trial and making all these objections. But do we all know why his objections were wrong? The purpose of today's video is to explain what the actual law is for actual objections in trial and not this Daryl Brooks nonsense. I'm Josh Sanford, I'm America's attorney, and if you are new here, it's time to lawyer up. Hit the subscribe button right now and let's jump right into this video. So listen, this is a blind reaction. I have not seen these clips, but I have seen clips of Daryl Brooks at trial, and I know it's going to be a zoo. But let's jump right in and see what happens. Do you see the driver of the red SUV in the courtroom here today, Officer Schneider? Objection, I do. Objection, hearsay. Overruled, <laughs> she may answer. I'd ask Mr. Brooks be directed to remove his mask so that Officer Schneider can identify him, please. Objection, I've never heard an uh, answer to the question. It has not been answered, Mr. Brooks. Uh, please remove your mask. Thank you. Officer Schneider, is the driver of the red SUV that you've just described for this jury present in this courtroom today? Objection, yes. you're saying. This is pretty basic. Probably in the third week of law school, if you take an evidence class, they're gonna talk about what hearsay is and what it isn't. And I understand figuring out what might be hearsay, some of the weird exceptions or whatever, kind of complicated. But this guy is saying, I was there, I saw a person driving. The person that I saw driving is that guy right there. That's not hearsay. First of all, it's an in-court statement. He's not reporting on what someone told him who's not in the courtroom. So you can't even get to the, oh, wow. You can't even start like a straight-faced hearsay analysis. He's not saying what someone else said. He's not even saying what he said. He's saying, that's the guy that I saw. Very, very dumb objection. I'm giving him a zero, zero out of 10 for that objection. Not even a good try. That wasn't even close to being a correct objection. I'm actually compelled to give him zero stars, zero out of 10 for that objection. That's ridiculous. Hopefully, fingers crossed, this next one makes a little bit more sense. Let's see. You saw Daryl Brooks driving that red SUV in front of that gas station, is that correct? Objection. At I that time, I didn't know. Being called that name and it's speculative. Um, overruled, you may answer. Um, at that time I didn't know his name, but yes. But now that you see him sitting in court today? Yes. That's the guy? Yes. Objection, speculative. Overruled, the record will reflect the identification as of the defendant as the driver of the red SUV she saw as depicted in this exhibit. Wow. Thank you, may we please display for, for everybody exhibit number 15, which has also previously been received and published. Go ahead. Can we zoom in please on the intersection of uh, Main Street and East Northeast Avenue? Objection, relevancy. <laughs> okay, I gotta stop it right there for a second because he just said, objection, relevancy. Well, relevance, that's a fine objection, whatever. I mean, that's a legitimate objection to a question. He hasn't asked a question. He's asking the courtroom deputy who's in charge of an exhibit or he's talking to someone who's on his trial team to zoom in on a certain exhibit and he says, objection, relevance. It's actually not a question of a witness. So you can't object to it because you think it's irrelevant. That's absurd. However, because relevance is a legitimate objection in certain circumstances, I'll give him a one out of 10 for that one. Now, earlier he objected and said that something was <laughs> speculative. A speculation from a witness is when they are talking about something they don't know. Like, well, I assume that, or I believe that. The witness testified, I saw that man. Well, that's not speculation. It doesn't mean that she's right. She could think that she saw him, but she's not saying, well, I thought about what someone else was doing and I think I know why they did it. Like you can speculate about other people's motives, right? You can speculate about what other people are thinking or feeling, but you don't speculate about what you are thinking or feeling if you're visual perception of the world is a complex series of thoughts and feelings. She's talking about her own thoughts and feelings. It's just not speculative. One, one, one out of 10. Let's check out another one. So go ahead. Thank you. You were sitting in front of the Historical Society, you, you testified? Yes. And do you recognize this map in front of you? Objection, speculative. Overruled the witness, my answer. He says something 
That's interesting to me. He says, you were sitting at whatever patio or plaza. Honestly, I wasn't really listening to the lawyer. No one's listening. No one listens to lawyers. That is a leading question. And Daryl Brooks didn't object to it. He could have objected to it because it's leading. And that's a friendly witness. That's not a witness that's battling with the lawyer. On the other hand, and the reason that objection would be overruled is that it's preliminary information. It's merely setting the stage for the testimony that is needed from this witness. It's, it gives context or background. Lawyers know not to object to leading questions that provide context or background. But then of course he does one of the most Daryl Brooksian things he can do, which is that he asks, the attorney asks the witness if she recognizes the map and he, she says yes and he says, speculative. Well, she knows what she does and doesn't recognize. So, I mean, I hate to be lingering so far down the scale. That's a zero. Okay. Would the historical society be uh, near this intersection that I'm circling, east and main? Yes. Okay, we can please remove <coughs> that annotation, Adam Clerk. When you saw the red SUV drive by, you testified you could not see the driver, correct? Correct. Because it was going so fast? Yes. Did you ever see that SUV come to a stop at any point on Main Street? No. In fact, did you see it accelerate as it traveled towards more people? That was Jason leading. Um, it says, uh, overruled, the witness may answer. I talked over Daryl Brooks. He said, speculative. He should have objected to leading because this part is actually her material testimony. Like that is why this information that she's saying right now, that's why they called her as a witness. And the lawyer, he let her a little bit. Now, leading's not that big a deal, but now that she knows what the lawyer wants her to say, even if the judge sustained the objection, he would have rephrased the question. She would have known what to say anyway, so it would have worked and it would have been fine. But instead, Daryl Brooks went back to his speculative objection, and I'm just being speculative here. I think he doesn't know what he's doing. Yes. Sounds like he was gonna say some stuff. And then I remembered you had called the witness, not the state. So cross-examination is appropriate. All right. Fair enough, though. That was an interesting moment because he made an improper objection to the testimony of a witness that he called, right? Because if you remember, this witness said that from where she was, he drove by so fast that she couldn't see who was driving. Well, she had further testimony about what happened later. And also, it's maybe not a great look on him at trial if he was using a high rate of speed as approaching while approaching a parade. But he says objection speculative. And first of all, that's nonsense. But the interchange there was interesting. The judge almost said sustained. She meant overruled, but she said S overruled. And then he said, uh, sound like you was gonna say sustain. Then the judge's answer was, yes, but I remember that you called this witness which invalidates some of the things that I said earlier in this video, which is that he was leading the witness because it's not his witness. And if the witness is called by the other party, you can lead them all day long. Now, leading's not a great idea because people on the jury get the idea that it's just the lawyer testifying and that the person on the stand doesn't actually know anything, and that's not great. Substate. Do you see any of the individuals you were just testifying about enter the screen, sir? Jason Spade, we too. Overruled, he may answer. Yes, I do. Could you identify them uh, by using the touch screen? Objection, lady. Overruled, he may answer. <laughs> oh. When the attorney says, can you identify any of them? And he says, leading. Oh, come on. Leading is when you tell the witness what the answer is to the question, such as, can't you identify them? Like, I'm telling you, you can identify them. Or wouldn't you agree with me that you can identify them? Or wouldn't you agree with me that the driver is this guy, Daryl Brooks right here? Just asking if they can identify them is the opposite of leading. It's an open-ended question. You can answer it however you want. And I can't even comment on his stupid speculative objection because honestly, I'm a little tired of it. It's not good. I'm gonna draw one big circle. Okay. It has two individuals, it has Jennifer and Kathleen. Uh, Kathleen has the red jacket on, and directly to her left would be Jennifer in a black jacket. Okay. A little hard to see right now, but as yeah, they... It's very hard to see. Um, keep walk, going. Could you see two people walking there, sir? 
Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, please clear the screen and continue playing. And pause. And I'm sorry because I can't see the counter, Your Honor. One, uh, it is at 44 seconds. 44 seconds. Thank you. Paused at 44. Do you see anybody else that you just testified to in the uh, in the video at this point, sir? Objection, speculation. Overruled. He may answer. Yes, I do. And who is that? Lee. Mitchell. Objection. Overruled. Mitchell Lampine. Please circle Mitchell. Did you know Mitchell's approximate age? Objection, speculative. Overruled. I believe he's about 10. Okay. All right, we can uh, take down 32. Did, um, this video goes on to show the red SUV drive through the extreme dance team, correct? Objection, leading. Um, it's foundational. Yeah. Overruled, it's foundational, it's previously been received. Go okay. Ahead. So we need to talk about that. As I was saying earlier, foundational or contextual testimony can be led, right? It orients the witness, it orients the jury, it orients everyone to the main point of why the person is testifying. And so even though it's leading, like you're telling them, this is the information I want you to say, because it's not the critical element of the testimony, because it's not the heart of the matter. It's not actually objectionable. It is leading. I'm giving him a six out of 10 for that objection, because it's a valid objection at a valid moment. However, it's invalid, sorry, because it's just contextual or background information. She called it foundational, but same thing. So let's just jump right back in here. To your knowledge of this video, sir, did uh, those individuals, Mitchell and uh, Ms. Stover and Ms. Pellmeyer remain along the left side of the road there as the SUV <coughs> went through? Objection, leading. Overrule, the witness may answer. They were hit by the vehicle and then moved to the left. Let's take a pause for a second. We yes. Are... That was a little rough. So what happened there was she asked if the victims remained in the roadway and he said, objection, leading. Well, it's an open-ended question. The questioner, the lawyer is not saying, didn't they remain in the roadway? It's did they? It, the question doesn't take you to, or to make this super simple for Daryl Brooks and anyone who doesn't understand, it doesn't lead you to the answer you're supposed to say, so it's not leading. And then of course the answer, the answer is just horrifying because they were in the roadway until his vehicle knocked them out of the roadway. So, you know, we watch these videos and we laugh at how stupid and idiotic and frustrating and ridiculous Daryl Brooks is. And we're all right. It, it actually is funny that he's so stupid and that he's putting his stupidity on display. But at the heart of this and what underlies all this is a horrible, senseless, wicked crime. Mitchell and uh, Ms. Stover and Ms. Pellmeyer remain along the left side of the road there as the SUV <coughs> went through. Objection leading. One of the dancers we have heard testimony that was involved with the grannies was a woman by the name of lola hospital is that correct objection leading overruled it's foundational the witness may answer yes she was is there video showing this hospital being struck by the suv objection leading <coughs> sustain this to the form of the question please rephrase sure well, I'm surprised at that ruling. I'm telling you, and I've made this point in prior videos, which if you haven't watched them, you should, and I'll put some links at the end of this video so that you can, but this judge is doing everything she can, and I mean everything, including taking actual verbal abuse from Daryl Brooks in order to protect the record in this case. So his objection is that it's leading when the lawyer asks the witness, did the car hit these people? It's really not leading. I understand how you could make even a remote colorable argument that it's slightly leading because 
it describes a course of action, which if you didn't know that that had happened, you might be more likely than not to agree that that's what happened based on how the question was worded. I'm telling you, Judge Darrow, she is making sure that there is nothing that he can successfully appeal on from these sorts of things because you actually can have a basis for an appeal from an objection that is ruled on incorrectly. The judge's rulings matter and they matter a whole lot. Now, they may not change the outcome of the case and in, uh, often in an appeal, the Court of Appeals or the Supreme Court, whichever appellate court you're in front of, will say maybe the judge did get that ruling wrong, but it didn't affect the outcome of the case. She really, really is holding the lawyer to the line here because the lawyer could ask the question in a different form, which is what the judge kind of suggested by saying, what did the vehicle do next? Well, there's no answer implied in the form of that question. And if that witness doesn't know that the vehicle ran into the victims, the witness is not going to learn from the lawyer to answer that way based on the way that revised question is asked. So, Brooks, ah, I'm giving you an 8 out of 10 on that objection. I ah, can't believe I'm giving him an 8 out of 10. But it's a fine objection. It's okay. He's still guilty. You two, tell the jury what you remember of these items, please. Objection leading performance. <clears throat> first part of the equation. Um, overruled the witness may answer. <laughs> okay, wow. This was a simple question. I want you to tell the jury, blah, blah, blah. It is leading to say, I want you to tell the jury, right? It's saying, use your mouth, make words. But she switches to an open-ended ending, which is like, testify. It's weird that she says, I want you to tell the jury. That's an odd turn of phrase into someone who's not very sophisticated. <laughs> He's not gonna know that as long as the back end of that question is open-ended and doesn't direct or lead the testimony, that it's a fine question. On the other hand, it wasn't a perfectly worded question. I'm giving him a two out of 10. So this is the red SUV that was used in the parade attack. This is a picture of it taken after. I remember a hood from a white jacket and a hat, a black hat with snowflakes on it, being um, pressed in between the hood and the windshield and the windshield wiper of the vehicle. Objection to it being called an attack. I think that's a, a, a disparaging remark for the record. Your objection is noted and the answer will stand. Um, I will instruct the witness to simply describe what he is seeing without further characterizing it as it will be up to the jury to determine the facts in this case. Go ahead. Thank you. That's a fascinating objection because what he means is that the witness is being conclusory. Okay, that the witness is calling it an attack when it wasn't. You have to remember that this whole thing has the stupid turned up to 11. Okay, like it actually does. But witnesses can say whatever they want. Like they can say what they think. And that's why the judge let the testimony stand. Because it's this witness's opinion that it was an attack. What does that mean? It means it wasn't an accident. It means it was a murder. Like his conclusion, having observed it, is that it was intentional behavior, that it was knowing behavior. It wasn't that someone was asleep or that a vehicle was out of control. He's saying based on what he saw, how it behaved, it was an attack. Now, the reason that the judge was right to let that testimony stand is that if the witness is being unfair improper, actually conclusory, and also reaching the wrong result, then that witness is subject to, oh, I can't believe I'm saying this, but subject to attack on cross-examination. I mean, that's what we call it in court. You attack a witness. You don't attack them, well, wow. You don't attack them like that. You cross-examine them and try to prove to the jury that they are either biased or that they don't know what they're talking about. So when you use a loaded word like attack, you're inviting cross-examination. However, that is a two-edged sword. And if he says something like, oh, you call it an attack, but actually it wasn't an attack. It was just an unfortunate incident. Now the door is open. The witness can say whatever they want. What's he gonna say? No, it was an attack. You intentionally did this. I watched you. 
drive on purpose into this crowd. I wouldn't go down that road if, if I were Daryl Brooks, but I'm not Daryl Brooks, so I can go down whatever road I want, but I'm not gonna go down a road where there's people on it. Wow, some of those were pretty hard to watch because the objections were just either dumb or baseless. You know, objections exist for a reason, and that's because lawyers can manipulate witnesses, right? They can kind of obscure the truth or they can make people say things they don't want to say or they can take them in the wrong direction or they can uh, lawyers can use certain questions in certain circumstances to make it look like a witness knows what they're testifying about when actually they don't know such as and i hate to quote daryl brooks here speculation but if you've laid a foundation such as i was present on the day of the event and I saw the vehicle, then the, whatever you say about the vehicle is not speculation because you have laid a foundation, right? And a lot of the objections that we saw were speculation and leading and they were nonsense. They actually were. But objections are super helpful in normal trials. Now the Brooks trial wasn't a normal trial. And honestly, I wish that the judge gave him a card which says, you get three objections today, use them wisely. But that's not the way trials work. As long as evidence is being taken, objections can be made. And you know, it's not just a verbal testimony. You can make an objection to documentary evidence or video evidence if an insufficient foundation is laid for how it's going to be admitted. Now, in trials, when there are lawyers on both sides, the lawyers tend to agree about what's the actual battleground. Like, what are we actually fighting about? They're not going to fight, AKA, lodge objections about things that don't matter. Now, if a party has a good faith belief that a witness is testifying beyond the reach of her knowledge, then objections are gonna be made to things like speculation and hearsay and many others. But if a witness's testimony is obviously sound, it's obviously based on personal experience or study or training, there's no reason to object to it. You don't like it. You think the witness is biased? Fine. Attack the witness on cross-examination with questions, not with a vehicle. But the idea that you would just kind of got an approach to objections, just like try everything. <sighs> I want to say it's a rookie move, but it's more like a moron move. A real lawyer's not going to do that. They're going to know that not only is that going to alienate the jury, who just wants to find out what happened, it's also not going to help your case at all. Because again, the jury, they actually do want to figure out what happened, who knows about it, what those people said, and then make a determination of the law and the facts based on that. This idea, and we saw a lot of this in the Brooks trial, that you would try to gamify it, right? That you would try to take it to a point of absurdity doesn't actually work. Should he have done it? Maybe, because the reality is, if he doesn't have antics, if he doesn't have games, he's getting 700 years in like a three day trial. But instead, he got the pleasure of being the center of attention, which if he has a narcissistic personality disorder, which has been diagnosed in the comments of my videos that he does, then he wants the trial. Hey, look, you know what the state of Wisconsin wants? A guilty verdict, okay? One that can't be overturned on appeal. And that's why we saw Judge Doro listening very carefully to the objections and when he was correct, or even partially correct, cutting him some slack because she wants that monster to go away for a really long time. And he is. I have special bonus footage for those of you who've stayed around this long. I appreciate your attention to detail. You thought you'd seen the last clip from the trial in this video, but check this out. Testimony here today, I understand um, he can object. However, my expectation for that objection process would be that he say, I object, he provide a basis. I oftentimes give parties, give me one word. Is it hearsay? Is it, you know, calls for speculation? Is it irrelevant? Whatever it may be, a very either one, two word objection or a very short summary statement of the basis for his objection. After he does that, I will rule on the objection and I expect him to honor the ruling that I have made. If he can't do any of that, he will remain muted and the process will then be, um, we've given him a sign, he's holding it up right now, demonstrating for us he has the objection sign. He, is, uh, he will be required to uh, write down his objections on a piece of paper that will be provided to the bailiff, the bailiff will provide it to me, and then I can rule on those, um, even if it's striking testimony later on. I do expect his objections to be based in law, 
Um, he, I note, uh, was provided with the copy of uh, it's a selected statutes, including the rules of evidence. I wish that I had Judge Doro in the studio right now so that I could high five her, for real. Like this judge is no nonsense. She is super serious. And not only does she know the rules, but she clearly understands the purpose behind the rules. And she's not trying to cheat him out of a fair trial. Now look, fair trial, unfair trial, this guy is going down, all right? He is going down. But she's making sure that he gets a fair trial, but that he's not gonna be abusive. This idea that he would like hold up the objection card while the judge is talking is so, it's like the most quintessential Daryl Brooks thing I've ever seen. It's just stupid. Kudos to the judge for pointing out that the fact that he's holding up the card that says objection means that he knows how to use the objection card in the exact way that she has given it to him for use in order to protect his rights. He's undercutting, undermining his own appeal on the grounds of like, I was unable to make objections because he's objecting right then. Kudos to the judge for spotting that. Wow. Well, that was just as crazy as we thought it would be, but also a little educational. I hope it was for you. It's good to talk about objections, why we have them and how they're supposed to be used. Now's a great time to drop down into the comments and give me your pro se opinion. Were there some objections of his that you thought had more merit than I thought they had? Give me your pro se opinion. Let me know if I was wrong. It's so great that you're here. Make sure you hit the subscribe button if you want more Daryl Brooks videos. Got them here, got them here. We're glad to have you on the channel. I'll be back very soon with more content. Thanks a lot, bye.